up guys? It's Missy. I'm back with another SimCity build a video. Today we're going to be doing a high level contest of mayor's walkthrough for the city Lala. Give me just a second here you guys. Okay. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. We recently redid our Discord and we're adding some new features and stuff to our Facebook page. So if you are not a member of either of those, the links are down below in the description of pretty much every video on YouTube that I've posted. Um, let's see. We have a kind of a new thing that we're doing. So every month we're going to draw somebody to give out rares and coins. In order to be eligible to win that prize, you need to add something along the lines of follow Missy Ann on YouTube in your city description. And then you can add it to the album link down below. If you don't know how to add it to the album link down below, then you're more than welcome to send it to me via Facebook or Discord, and I'll add it to the album for you. And then once a month, we will do the drawing, and you'll be notified if you were uh, the, the winner. Okay? We will also be looking for people on the global market that also have that in their description. So pretty much everybody in my group is... Whenever they're out shopping on the global market, they're going to be like checking out city descriptions. We've seen quite a few already. They've been added to the album. Uh, if you're looking for an active group, we do have a couple of spots available still. You do need to be very active and playing the contest to mayors competitively. Depending on what level you are will determine if you play high or low level com. Okay, so this person's been in my group for a while. You guys have seen many videos from her. The last couple of months, she recently went from low level to high level contest to mayors. So for those of you guys who are not familiar with the difference, the difference is that low level players have to stack up upgrades in their main list so that they can ensure that they don't come in during the streaks. Whereas a high level player is the opposite. They're not camping so they can do the upgrades. Okay, so the order of rotation is going to be completely different. If you are a low level player, you would not want to watch high-level videos as they will only confuse you, okay? Now, I wanted to talk about how to do a proper task assessment because a lot of people really don't know how to do that. I'm going to be putting out a video about that. We go through the task assessment every time we do a walkthrough, so pay very close attention. Um, basically, you're going to go through and you're going to label every one of your tasks main rotatable main rotatable no touch cancel, and premium or non-premium, okay? Now, premium is a task that has the ability to be worth 3,000 points. High premium is a task that can be worth over 3,000 points. Non-premium is a task that cannot be worth 3,000 points. Main is a task that is in your list for 2,000 points or higher. Now, that does not mean that in order to be a main task, it has to be premium or non-premium. That is irrelevant, okay? All it has to be is 2,000 points in your main list, and it is considered a main task, all right? Now, a rotatable task is a task that is below 2,000 points and used as a way to open up more main tasks. No, no touch is a task that you do not touch for the duration of the contest, NT slash C stands for no touch slash cancel. We do not usually cancel any upgrades unless they are 3,000 points or higher for low-level players. For high-level players, you really shouldn't ever be canceling anything. Honestly, there's really never a reason to cancel. Uh, you pretty much can do all of your assignments, and if you cannot do all of your assignments, then you're not playing properly. You need to make sure that you are in a position to do all assignments. Okay? Um, that pretty much sums that up. So, a task assessment, you go through, you say what you know about each task, you assess the entire list before you begin anything. This will help you with kind of having an idea of how your week's going to go. Every single week has like a storyline that you follow, right? When I do these walkthroughs, I'm basically like the narrator of their week. That is essentially what you should be doing in your mind, is narrating your list, your week, all that, okay? It's going to help you tremendously. So, beginning thing, what can we say about the, the assignment that is in the streaks? What is it? Well, it cannot be worth 3,000 points. That would make it non-premium. 
it is not worth 2,000 points, that would make it a rotatable task. So we would mark it NPR, okay? Now, it's the streaks task. What else can we say about it? It's a coins assignment. What do we know about the coins assignment? Open up your contest mayor's guide. It should tell you that there is a medium, medium to high algorithm rate, meaning you usually get at best six rotations before it comes back, right? So it's not really a good uh, task to open up better opportunities when it's very early on in the contest, meaning that it being in the streaks, well, at least it's not in your main list taking up space. If it was in the main list, we would use that maybe five tasks or so before the streaks as a way to secure an upgrade for low-level players or for high-level players to secure a long factory production to avoid extra downtime during the streaks. Okay? So, like I said, high-level players, you guys are doing upgrades, so you guys are just going to try to secure any, like, feed, electrical, textiles, sugar, that kind of stuff. Being that it's in the streaks, we don't really have that option. So the next one here is a premium main leaf simoleons task. With high level players, one of the most difficulty, one of the most difficulty, <laughs> one of the most difficult things about being a high level player is regional tasks. Now, this particular player, I believe, has two, three. No, she has three regional maps unlocked at the moment. So what this means is you have a regional HQ task. If you open up a regional HQ, it closes within 24 hours, and then you have to wait for it to open again, right? Before you can do that assignment, or you have to go and open up a different regional HQ in order to complete it. It is extremely important that you pay very close attention to which ones you're opening because of these coins assignments. This is a main task. It's gonna be her first assignment that she does because it's the highest in the list with the best opportunity, right? It's also premium. It has the ability to be worth 3,000 points. So should she open up her regional HQ to do this assignment or should she sell the regional items that she has available? Once she decides, she needs to stick to whatever decision she makes, right? So. Essentially, what you would want to do is you would want to leave the regional HQ closed and try to sell the items for coins to ensure that you can get this stuff done throughout the week if it comes back or if she gets a regional HQ assignment. Totally up to her. She does have two other ones that she can uh, fall back on, though, which is good. So that will be her first choice, but let's continue on and look at the rest of her list. She also has a main premium London delivery. So what she would do is she would go over to her airport. She would take a look at it, see if the flight is there, if it is there, what's it asking for, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, the next one is going to be a main non-premium repair. Now at this value, we do this assignment because why? because it's taking up a 2,000 spot on our list. People have a hard time understanding, you know, when to do a non-premium and when not to do a non-premium. The order of rotation for high-level players is really quite simple, right? The order of rotation for high-level players is that you do your main tasks, starting with the highest main task with the best opportunity, okay? Then, when all of those are done, you then move on to your highest rotatable premium. They're very, 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 you know, big description there. Pay very close attention to what I just said. Highest rotatable premium. So if you have a non-premium, let's say caps task for 1600 and you have a 1000 VU assignment at the bottom of your list, you would do the VU assignment even though the caps are 600 more, okay? Once all of your low premiums have been rotated, you've opened up all those opportunities, those should bring in more main tasks. If they do not, and at some point, let's say you're looking at a list full of non-premium assignments, you then do the highest non-premium with the lowest possible algorithm rate because you don't want it to continue to come back. That doesn't do you any good. Now, the repair is a non-premium with a medium to very high algorithm rate. It usually does come right back, but we're doing it because of its value. Okay, so if this was lower, it would be marked no touch or rotatable. 
So it would basically be rotatable at, uh, after the streaks because of the high algorithm. We wouldn't rotate that, okay? Now, low-level players, you guys are different. You really shouldn't be watching these videos. All right, upgrade Paris for 2000. Now, this one is a premium, and it has a high algorithm rate on it. The way that you rotate your 2,000-point assignments matters. Some people, they see a bunch of 2,000-point assignments, and they think, eh, they're all 2,000 points. I'm just going to rotate whatever one I want, whatever one's easiest. That's not how you do it, okay? You want to make sure that you're rotating the ones with the best possible opportunities first. The next one is a war delivery for 2,000. That is also a main premium. That one is also limited, so it should have an L next to it on her task assessment. That means that it's limited, meaning that you can only do it when the war is in session or the monster is there, okay? The next one is a rotatable, non-premium epic project. Now, this task has a tendency to just keep coming back, usually about three, four times in a row, and then it either stays gone pretty much for the duration of the contest or just sits in your list taking up space. Now, for her, she does have other... Uh, you know, maps. So if she did end up in a situation where this task came back in the streaks, she wouldn't really have to worry about downtime. So it's not as pressing of uh, a problem here. Okay, the next one is a rotatable no-touch non-premium keys. Now, it's pretty much no-touch, right? So given the fact that she can do pretty much any assignment that comes her way. It really doesn't make sense that she would ever pick like a 1200 keys. The only way that she would would be one if she was in reverse rotation or if it was after the streaks and she was doing value trumps opportunity and that was the highest in her list, which is pretty unlikely that that would occur. Okay, the next one is a no touch. Oh wait, no, sorry. The next one is a rotatable premium on the Green Valley. Now, the way that you rotate your upgrades, starting with Latin and Old Town first, because they're high premiums, then Omega, then Regional, then Airport, then Regular. Okay, that is the order in which you want to rotate those. So this one does take pretty good priority, meaning when main tasks are gone, that's going to be the first thing that she rotates is her, her premium there. The next one is a no-touch monster. And that one is at uh, 1,000 points. We would never touch it under any circumstances. So pretty much cross that off for, for the rest of the, you know, contest. Okay, the next one is a rotatable no-touch non-premium mower's task. Don't see at any point that she would ever go that low on the list. So that is pretty much a no-go. Same thing with the upgrade design challenge and the minerals. So... Starting off, we would go with the Leaf Simoleons, okay? All right, cool. Now she gets a factory production task. That would be marked a non-premium, okay, uh, rotatable. Now, this non-premium rotatable is kind of a pain in the butt because they don't give you a whole lot of time to do it, and you have to be there every, like, six minutes to pick up the stupid pieces. However... It has a very low algorithm rate on it. So that being said, it would actually not be a bad idea for her to uh, consider that when all of her premiums are dealt with. Okay. So looking at this again, let's just make sure she picked the right one here. So here she made a mistake. So if you look at all of her 2000 point assignments, she had London and she had war deliveries. Technically, she should have went with the word deliveries because they open up um, usually a little bit better opportunity than, let's say, the flights. But not only that, they're limited, so they, they can only be done during war. Now, granted, war did just start, so it's not as pressing, but technically she, you know, should have followed the... If she would have followed the contest of mayor's math, it would have led her to do the, the war one. Was it that big of a mistake? No, it was not. It's not that that big of a mistake. Okay. Uh, she did get the Rosen Export HQ. Now, this one, I don't know if she opened up the Leaf Simoleons um, 
regional HQ to do that assignment. If she did, she would want to continue on with that HQ and pay the cash rather than open up a second one. That would mean that she opened up two HQs within the first two assignments of the contest. Not a good sign. Okay, so if you are in this position, you would want to just pay the cash and, you know, keep that one HQ open. If she didn't, let's say that she sold items rather than opened up the HQ, then you would want to pick the regional map with the least amount, or sorry, the regional map with the most regional items. Because once your regional HQ is open, once it closes, right, you're not going to be able to earn coins that way. So you want to make sure that if you were to, let's say, get a leaf simoleons task and your HQ is closed, that you have a way to do that assignment by, again, having a lot of uh, regional items, okay? So I'm assuming she does that because it's too early to ignore a main task like that. Now it comes down to Paris, war, and repair. So it would be war, and she did Paris. Again, mistake. I don't know why she did that. Um, war would have brought better opportunity. Let me see if she put a comment here. Yeah, I did. Okay, so would have done war. So then she did, she got the uh, launch view for 3,000. Okay. Now she gets a non-premium medal for 1590 and she does the war. That is correct. She gets her 2000 VU. Now she gets a 2400 wave simoleons task. Okay. Now she gets a non-premium pink lemonade and she does her 2000 repair like she's supposed to. She gets the regional export HQ back. So again, that's for six rows. She did have to do the waves. So my guess is... She's probably using that one, meaning she has one regional uh, HQ left closed. Now she's got the Omega upgrade for 3000, which is good. Now here is where people have a hard time. They have to decide if it is the right time to take downtime during active war or continue on and work this along alongside whatever it is that they're doing. Under these circumstances, let's take a look at her list. Do we have a whole lot of high value tasks blocking her? No, we do not. Uh, is it pressing that she do this 2000 point te text assignment rather than just continue on with her list? No, it is not. It would be a waste of uh, active wartime for her to just take that much downtime. Okay. So Looking at her list here, we have a non-premium pink lemonade, non-premium metal, non-premium fries, non-premium textiles, uh, ecotex, non-premium epic, non-premium keys. Now we have the premium green valley and the rest are non-premium no touch. So what would be the right choice? The green valley, because the order of rotation is that once the main tasks are gone, you do your highest premium, okay, with the best algorithm rate, that would be the Green Valley. A lot of people would have made the mistake here. They would have either taken downtime or done the metal. Don't do that, okay? So she does the Green Valley, and she gets a 1760 on sugar. Now, at this value, pretty much we're not going to touch that, right? It doesn't make sense. The sugar has too high of an algorithm rate. We're talking... Uh, only one round of downtime for her, but with the high algorithm rate attached to it, we wouldn't want it to come back for more points and cause more downtime. So I would have just pretty much ignored the sugar. That being said, what, uh, I don't know if she filled her, how she filled up her factories. I can't remember how many slots she has unlocked yet. Looks like she's getting really close to having 60 slots. So she may have 55. That may only be one round of techs. Either way, um, looking at this, we would go with the, let's see here, the highest non-premium with the best opportunity and the lowest algorithm rate. So if she was able to, the metal would have been correct. Okay, that... <clears throat> That didn't make sense. This was a mistake. Let me see what these comments are. 
Okay. I said mistake. She said she had electrical prep. She didn't want to pick him up. Uh, no. But I said, okay, at this point I said metal wasn't your only option. Order of rotation is non-premium with the lowest algorithm and best opportunity. Epic has medium algorithm and versus uh, regional factory. So, given that she had electrical prepped and she didn't want to pick it up just yet, let's go back and look at her other options. She had the metal that obviously she couldn't pick up. So what else did she have? She had pink lemonade and she had the uh, Ecotex. Now, she could have done the pink lemonade, but she could have done the Ecotex. Uh, Ecotex have probably a, a way less likely chance of coming back than, let's say, even the pink lemonade. So they've also been sitting longer. Uh, they are also part of one of her main doorways that she was working early on. So that being said, pink lemonade or the Ecotex would have been fine. But Epic should not have been done. Epic does not bring good opportunity. It, the algorithm rate on it is, is higher than the others. Okay? So, let's go back. Now she gets the waves again for 2000 So that would be her main task. So she would do it. She gets a 25-20 on refrigerators. Now, honestly, you guys, I don't know what it is that you guys are prepping uh, in your appliance store or what you have unlocked yet. But I noticed that a lot of people do get TV productions and refrigerator production tasks. I usually prep uh, TVs or refrigerators, one of the two. I don't get refrigerators as often as I get TV assignments and TVs are better in terms of uh, you know, production, you know, like making money. So I usually do TVs, bulbs even, or refrigerators. Try to to make your guys' preps match whatever assignments you get more frequently. So she does the refrigerators. Now that, again, you guys also note that the production plan that I have available for you, it gives you a quick guide to uh, locate whatever shop you have, whether it be star one, two, or three. It gives you that quick guide to see how many of that item you can produce on a silver or gold token. So that you have an idea of how much downtime you're gonna be having. That was probably three or four gold tokens. So that was a, a, a pretty big chunk of downtime. So let's see here. It looks like she's at four days, 22 hours after doing the refrigerator. So yeah, she had a lot of downtime on that. Now she has a regional uh, export HQ for 1500. Now here is where you have to Again, do your comm math. Everything says to do this assignment besides one category, and that category is what's going to be the deal breaker. Risk, okay? Is this assignment premium? Yes. Does it have good opportunity? Yes. Does that mean you should do it? No, not necessarily, okay? Follow the storyline of your week. Look at your current situation. She is 25 assignments away from streaks. She's had this assignment twice now, so it has a history of coming back. What else? Risk. She has two of out of her three regional export HQ rows already opened, and they already have a significant amount of time taken off of them, and she's already done a significant amount of rows, so they would be very expensive to continue to have to do. If she does this assignment again, what is the risk? The risk is that it comes back again for a fourth or fifth time. What else? That it comes back higher, thereby blocking higher assignments from coming in. It also has another risk. It can come back in the streaks, making her have to do it. And if all of her export HQs are, op are closed from being open too early, then she could fail the streak. So are those 1,500 points that important? Absolutely not. This should not be touched for the duration of the contest or until the streaks are completely done, value trumps up, then if that is the highest in her list at that point, then do it. Mistakes like these, the reason I'm explaining this so thoroughly is because these are the types of mistakes that will be what cause you to win or lose. Okay, it's very important that you guys follow your storyline. 
that being said, she should be prepping uh, these textiles, part of these textiles. I know she has electrical prepped, but she's already like a day into the contest and uh, or almost a day into the contest and it hasn't popped up yet. So she needs to decide what she's going to do about these textiles. You know, we don't want to go too far and not have uh, gotten this taken care of earlier. So at this point, I would prep probably, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't, have, don't know how many slots she has. If she has 55, then I would just prep them all at once. If she doesn't, then I would prep uh, a partial and then do the metal. She does need to get the metal out of the way sooner rather than later because it's a super quick assignment and it could get things moving again. So hopefully she does the metal. Okay. Now she gets an upgrade Tokyo for 2000, upgrade Green Valley for 2000, 2400 Paris. These are all main task assignments. Same thing with the upgrade war disaster. 3K on the VU. Okay. 2400 common war attack. 2000 VU. Now we have a 1770 on the coconut production. Now, this is just a shop production like anything else. It does have a low algorithm in terms of uh, it coming back. But we're, let's see here, 17 assignments away from streaks. Okay. She really needs to just stop and do these textiles because the closer that she gets to the streaks, the longer, or the closer she gets, the more likely it is that they come back in the streaks. Now she is moving rather quickly, so that's nice. Uh, she does have time, but it's also holding one of her really good doorways. She hasn't had a whole lot of good assignments coming in. Uh, I would have stopped and, and done the text at this point. And she went with the coconuts, which I would consider to be a mistake. Okay, now she gets a 3600 old townhome, another leaf simoleons task, 3000 green valley, 2000 limestone. Now here we are, we're 11 tasks away from streaks. The textiles have not been done yet. So now we're getting so close to the streaks that it would just kind of be stupid to do them at this point. And that's what I was afraid of. Uh, okay, so now she does the pink lemonade. And she gets Paris, EU. Now she's eight tasks away from streaks. Now textiles are just gonna have to wait. I mean, she's too close. So we've got the 1800 on that. Now she secured the feed assignment, which is good. So we're not gonna be doing that. That would just be crazy, right? So she's got sugar, text, and feed secured. Electrical is the one I'm kind of worried about, though. That one takes up, you know, electrical and glass is what she needs to secure. Now, she can't do the uh, regional export HQ. Uh, repair brings no good opportunity, so that doesn't make any sense to do. We have the 800 on the fries, which that's way too low. So the only option that I see is the Ecotex. Okay. And she did repair. Now, this was probably one of the biggest mistakes that she made all week. This is a rookie mistake. I don't know why she did this or what she was thinking, but it's seven assignments before the streaks. Okay. This, this particular assignment brings you no good opportunity. It's going to come back, right? And when it does, you're just in the same position that you were in before, except for your average is now lowered. And if you look at it, if you look at the points values of the repair, you have a 1,200 repair, 1,600, 2,000, 2,400. If you're willing to do it at 1,600, you're obviously going to do it when it hits main task value, which would be 2,000 and 2,400. So the only one that you would consider to not do would be what, the 1,200? And at that point, how many times has it come back? How many times have you lowered your average? How many assignments could you have done between now and then? You know what I mean? That could have been better had you picked something else. So this was a big mistake. Now she gets her launch view, okay? 
leaf simoleon's task this one's this is like the what third time it's come in now now at that value she would need to do it uh, she got the neo simoleon's task that's correct now she gets an epic for 1600 now this was a mistake okay so here's the thing with this so even though she does have the um ability to do other epic projects on her other maps the downtime wouldn't be an issue for her so that is not what gets me about doing this assignment what gets me is that she should have done her math now if you look at her math let's see here or let's look at what she could what it should have done so 1600 on the epic we have a 1380 on the ecotex okay so 20 that's 400 so for 220 points difference she could have done an assignment that has been sitting for a long period of time that is part of her main task doorway that has way better opportunity an extremely low algorithm rate yeah i would have done that not the epic especially with how close she was to the streaks. Doesn't make sense to do the epic. Because if it just keeps coming back in the streaks for, let's say, low values, that sucks, right? Then she also think about the inventory that gets wasted, right? And then you have to think about the fact that uh, the algorithm rate on it is so high. So you really don't want non-premiums to keep coming back in because they're non-premiums, right? Ideally, you want to have the premiums roll in. So if you have to rotate a non-premium, you want it to be one that it has a really less likelihood of coming back, right? Okay, so now she gets the non-premium uh, lawn chairs for 1760. Now, these ones are significantly higher than, you know, the Ecotex. They're a shop production, so they have a better opportunity. They have a less likelihood of returning. So that would be her next play, okay? And she does keys. This makes no sense to me whatsoever. Now, I know she's trying to secure long factory productions. However, it's not crucial that you start streaks at 20 tasks remaining. All that is important is that you, when you hit 20 tasks remaining, you have a majority of whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, whether if you're a low-level player, whether it be uh, upgrades or factory productions or high-level player, it be factory productions. The idea is that you do still have time. If you plan to use all 15 tickets, you can go down to nine tasks remaining before you absolutely have to start the streaks, right? That being said, why would we think about it like this? Why would we rotate a keys to bring in a long factory production when the keys has a likelihood of coming back and it's 800 points less on our average. And mind you, she still has four days and set four days, seven hours left. So even if she did get a long factory production, it wouldn't be the end of her week. It's not as crucial that she make all these crazy jumps around on her list. That being said, she should have done the lawn chairs for 560 more points, okay? Now she gets a 2,000 uh, Paris upgrade, 2,000 delivery, 3,000 Green Valley, and then it turns into a wood assignment for 1590. I'm assuming that she has something prepped um, in her shops. Now, Again, the lawn chairs is the only thing that I see that should be done. And why the hell did you do that? I do not understand that. At all. Why? Why did you take two, like almost 200 points less? <sighs> okay. All right. Um. 1900 on the limestone now at this rate given that i think this is the only hq that she hasn't opened yet it's 
right but it's right you know next to the streaks i would probably leave this sit you know uh, you really don't want assignments like this to come back in now she does have that regional export hq secured but if she can't finish all six streaks within 24 hours that uh limestone hq could close on her or will close on her in 24 hours so that would mean that if she let's say she gets through three streaks the limestone hq closes that would mean that she would have to have a lot of limestone items and play around with trying to get the sim bubbles to pop up and sell her items so i would not risk it at this point at this point she goes with the launcher she gets the 2400 lat okay now she gets the 3000 war card upgrade all right and now we here we are again with the 1700 neil simoleons now this assignment being you know rotated this close to the streaks having already been done once it's it's a hit and miss i would probably do it because of its points values so yeah i would have went with that uh now we've got a 2000 limestone upgrade here we've got a 1650 on plastic now she's got nothing better at the moment so yep that was correct 2100 on veggies 20 or 2000 on green valley the thing that i worry about though is that this is a good doorway so it's probably not going to result in a long factory production that's why those ecotechs really should have been done um, those probably would have resulted in something better like glass or electrical it's hard to say but definitely would have rotated those at some point now she gets a launch rear war attack which she does and now she has to start the streaks with a 3,000 point assignment sitting there which sucks but it is what it is so she gets the coins uh, 3,000 Tokyo, 1,600 on the keys, 2,400 on fire pits. That really sucks, okay? Uh, these things take like three-something hours to make. They're like yogurt, and that's like three or four gold tokens. So, again, this is why it is super important that you, one, do your epic projects at a low level, have uh, tokens available for the contest, because if you think about it, just between the refrigerators and the fire pits she's used like 10 gold tokens yeah so it's not cheap or easy by any means to play high level comp okay so she does that and it looks like she must have had some oh no she didn't have any prepped you guys um a little tip for you high level players ideally most production tasks not all, but most production tasks exceed the 11 items that are requested. Um, or the, you know how you can have 11 items in your shop. Usually production tasks exceed 11 in quantity. What I usually do is I'll do like a split prep. You know, for example, let's say that you are in your uh, garden store and you do the fire pits but then you don't get fire pits you get something like let's say saps for 2100 uh it really sucks having to pick up 10 freaking fire pits usually what i'll do is i'll do uh half of one and half of the other starting with the shorter half first okay so like let let's say that you did five fire pits and or six fire pits and five saps but you put the fire pits in first and you get saps you're going to be pretty pissed that you have to pick up six fire pits to pick up those saps you would be a lot less pissed if it was the other way around and you had to pick up six saps or sorry five saps uh, for you know to do the the fire pits try to put your least amount of time taking items first okay this will at least give you a 50 50 chance of saving some time because at least six fire pits is like two gold tokens that's a little, that's two freaking hours you know uh same thing with like the refrigerators that way 
you know, you can do like the TVs and then put refrigerators down, putting the refrigerators at the end of the production. Okay, so she's got uh, blue textiles, green valley, streaks bonus for 8,000, limestone. Now we've got 3,000 omega, okay, 2,000 launch war disaster, 2,000 London, 8,000 bonus, 2,400 regular residential, 800 on the tape, 1,200 on chems, so there is a little bit of downtime there. 960 on planks. Now, at this point, you guys, she should be, um, like, let's say whatever her nighttime is at nighttime, prep whatever factory production that takes the longest that you do not have in your main list. So, in her case, it would be electrical. Don't prep it unless it's during a time in which you are not completing assignments because if she preps electrical now and um, gets something like seeds, she's going to have to wait for the electrical to finish, then pick them up, then do seeds, and that would be a complete waste of everything. You don't want to fail a streak because you prepped something too soon. Okay, 3,000 Tokyo, 1,500 on chems again, 2,000 repair, 8,000 bonus, 2,160 on veggies, 1,000 VU, another chems, Okay, this player usually finishes within the first day and a half of the contest. So for her to be two days uh, remaining, is, it says a lot. This is exactly why it is so crucial that you guys go as quickly as you do. There's tape again for a thousand. And it looks like that's the last screenshot that I have for her. Wait, no. Is it? Okay. Um... She needs to upload her album, I guess. Give me a second here. Okay, so I'm going to get a hold of her, have her update her album, and then I will do a part two to this video. For those of you guys who are... Uh... Actually, that might be the end of her week. No, that is the end of her week. Oh, I guess she just didn't provide the uh, end score with the screenshot of her bonus points because she was at nine tasks remaining and uh that would mean that if she used all 15 tickets she would be at the end so yeah that is the end of her week so basically she adds another thousand points for the tape and then she gets the eight thousand for the bonus points which puts her just above two hundred thousand points finishing so uh that's a pretty good score you know there were a few mistakes made learn from those mistakes and she will be fine. Lala, I would highly recommend that um, if you are that low on tickets and I don't know what your leaderboard looked like this week, but just be very careful because you're running very low on tickets. And if you have a really good lead on time, it may be more uh, advised that instead of getting your stuff down to a point where um, you have, you know, nine tasks remaining. Like, you can't finish your streaks unless you use all your tickets. It may be advised that you just risk having factory tasks come in rather than putting yourself in a position where you have to use all your tickets because you only have 24 tickets, you know. Um, granted, you're going to get, like, 35 from this pass at some point, but you got to earn those first. And by then, I mean, if you use 15 every week, you're going to be out of tickets and then you're, you're going to be in a world of hurt, you know? Um, Cause once you're out, that's it. Like you don't earn them as much because you're not going to be earning as many points. So yeah, I would definitely slow down. Even if you can save one ticket here and there or two, whatever, uh, I would definitely try. Okay. Anybody here who is in the same position, I'm going to give you the same advice. If it comes down to, you know, winning or losing, you need to use your tickets. But if you have an ex like extremely insane, like, you know, uh, lead on the leaderboard, I would definitely try to conserve them. Just know 
that like a 50k lead is not very much, especially if somebody hasn't hit their streaks yet, okay? So if you're somebody who goes to sleep before the contest of mayors ends and you wake up, you know, hours later, uh, just know that a lot of people do put points up right at the very end. So you need to secure your place value. It would really suck to wake up the next day and be like, well, I had the tickets to win and I lost because I went to sleep or something. So definitely uh, just be aware of that. All right, you guys, good luck to you. And if anybody here would like their week reviewed for a uh, kind of like a walkthrough like I did with her, you're more than welcome to submit your screenshots, but they do need to be in order and you need to show me the item that, or the task in which you have selected. I do not want to see screenshots of your list where nothing's selected and then I have to figure out what assignment you did. So good luck to you guys. And like I said, hit me up if you guys need any help.